Apple's been getting kind of carried away with these ads lately. Mm. Uh, they were, they have this durability thing going on. Well, first of all, before we get into that, y you've been using the nothing phone a little bit. Nothing phone one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have. And me just mentioning the name makes you a little jumpy. <laughs> I can tell because the thing is so damn slippery. Mine is intact, but there's been so many close calls and yours, it's been, it's slipping and sliding everywhere. Yeah, I can't even really hold it, let alone put it in my <laughs> slippery pocket. Or it's on certain possible. surfaces where you think that it's a flat surface and you look over and it's just creeping slowly. Yeah, it has a it has a thing of sliding. It's just constantly on a flat surface yeah. or yeah. putting it onto something. It's like sliding constantly. It's very slidey. Glass is very slidey. It's a bit tough to find cases for these things right now. I don't have a later case for it. Yeah. Which is a problem. Right. But the thing it just has launched in such select uh, markets that it didn't make a lot of sense at the time to even make a case for it and but now I'm just realizing it's it's hard to use it in its current way and wear normal clothes and get in and out of cars and put it down on the arm of the couch or like do any like it is so slippery yeah mine's dinged up a couple of times yeah you just want to you, know. you want to come clean on it yeah your wills has He's lucky, and Wills has hit uh, the pavement. Has it hit the uh, tile floor or it's wood hit floor? The tile floor? It's hit the tile the floor. Yeah. You're lucky yours is not shattered yet. Maybe that says something about durability that you've. Sure. But to, to have the thing so slippery, you've dropped it so many times in really a short period of time trying it out mm. goes to tell you that, okay, you might, you really might want to pick up a case for this one. Some well, kind of case. I don't know. Maybe it just might be me. Um, what does the audience think? <laughs> what do people think? Well, I mean, there's an yeah. element of it, which is you, but your la what was the last phone you had? Uh, well, it had a later case on it. But what, which phone was it, out of it curiosity? It was the S21. S21, and then you had the Pixel for a while. Mm -hmm. Or did that have a later case on it as well? That one did as well. Okay, and when you the when you have the later case on, this is not an ad. This is not meant to no, be an ad. But not. when you have it on, it creates just enough friction in your pocket that it doesn't fly out at every single opportunity. Correct. That's it. Yeah. That's all you need. And, and so, God, I don't know. Maybe the, the Nothing Phone is a candidate for manufacturing a... A case just because now, now they do they did put out a case but we can't order it here because the phone isn't even launched yet. I should probably just talk to them and they'll send it over but that doesn't solve it for a lot of people who sure. have this and the case they're selling is polycarbonate which is also slippery itself and so and it's really not the most exciting case if and then and then you have the thing where this phone is so cool to look at do you want to cover it up mm -hmm. in the first place uh, so, but anyway, it's, besides that, the phone is good. That's one thing I'll it's say. It's a solid phone. Having my SIM card in there. Software-wise? And this is, we, we're, I'm not really on the topic right now, but I'll get there. But, yes, from a software perspective, it's more rock solid than I expected. Connectivity is better than I expected as far as, like, phone stuff, calls, Wi-Fi, um, 5G LTE, like the, all the Snapdragon stuff is perfect. Software is basically stock Android with obviously very few modifications. And your favorite sounds. And the sounds. <laughs> but I mean, you could do whatever you want with the sounds. So, yeah. and, and it's the first phone in a long time outside of the folding phones where people ask me what it is. Mm. They, they, all, all types of people come up to me and say, what is that that you're, so, Definitely something has happened here mm -hmm. with this device. Oh, another thing I should mention, I'll take a photo of this. I don't have it here right now, but I had the clear case from Apple mm -hmm. for the uh, Pro Max. Mm. It fits on here perfect, minus the buttons not lining up. It fits on here perfectly. Really? Oh. I'll show you. I'll bring it in, and I'll show you. 
not that you could use it because the buttons don't line up. They're okay. being pressed by the case, and it's a tiny bit loose in there, but tolerances it looks it's ridiculous yeah. how close the actual fit is interesting but people have already made these comparisons but anyway the reason i brought that up is because of apple's new ad which is uh talking about durability and they've been talking more and more about durability durability and privacy seem to be uh, and, uh of interest from a marketing perspective for apple i think it's smart marketing for the record i think this is a thing that affects a lot of people and i also think there's really not that much happening in smartphones right now where you're having groundbreaking things take place. So instead, you look at these categories that do affect everyone that are very utilitarian and you say, relax, our product is robust or durable or it has enhancements in these different areas, maybe privacy. And so this is the commercial. It's iPhone 13 Edge is the name of it. And I can play it? I believe you can play it. Yeah, it's it's a commercial. We are commentating on the commercial. Well, okay. Which therefore I'm glad. creates a fair use scenario. So in the ad, you have a device that is buzzing, getting a phone call for uh, from Fernando, and it is placed. The phone is placed on the edge of the countertop, and it's slowly sliding away. And the last little buzz kicks it off and onto the floor, which doesn't sound very far away, the sound effect. No. It's like, how? wait, that's not a regular distance to the floor. What's the floor made out of? Uh, it's a lot of questions, right? Yeah. Now, this is also a slippery phone, talking about the iPhone, mm -hmm. right? It's a glass on both sides, very similar to the Nothing phone. And I don't doubt that it would could slide its way off of a countertop, uh, given a phone call and a vibration. But it's a weird connotation here. Relax its iPhone is what it says after it falls off the counter. Relax its iPhone. Like, I know it's not false advertising because you're not really telling me anything. You're not telling me iPhone designed to withstand whatever. You're just saying relax its iPhone. Mm. And I'm like, huh. I feel like there's some sort of subconscious thing going on here. There's some sort of deeper thing where you're going to perceive it as Apple telling you you can drop your phone when in reality what they're saying is it's an iPhone and you have you probably have Apple Care and we have the best service in the world anyway. So even if anything happened to the phone, you'd be all sorted out. But it's still annoying to take it to Apple Care and then have you wait, get a loaner phone or something. It's still annoying. Uh, however, there have been improvements. In durability it is true that apple has improved certain aspects of their devices made them more robust in certain ways mm -hmm. uh but you do still see people walking around with cracked phones mm -hmm. all the time so i just it's just an interesting angle i think it's a smart marketing angle but i don't know how many people buy this idea that because they have an iphone and not another phone they're less concerned when it falls off the counter mm. i just don't really see that angle yeah it's a double-edged sword don't don't this commercial really yeah i just think that this ever the the last time i used a phone that was this slippery would have probably been an iphone and it's just funny that you're playing up the idea that simply ringing would bust it right off the edge mm -hmm. and then you're saying that it's a feature that it can fall no well, it's a feature that it could fall and you can still feel relaxed because it's an iPhone. I don't know. You people in the comments tell me what you think they're trying to say. I think they're just, it's just this correlation between security and privacy and reliability and relaxation because you've spent the money on a well-known brand with a well-known infrastructure for service. And it's just not a place that you have to worry ever. Be yeah. Because honestly, I think that that's more of the play here. Mm -hmm. You can think of a lot of smartphone brands where if you cracked it, you wouldn't even know where to start. You call a number, a cardboard box shows up. It is an advantage that Apple legitimately has. The ecosystem. The whole bigger picture. But I don't think too many people are happy mm. or, or very relaxed when they see their iPhone hit the ground like this concrete floor off the edge of the table. I don't think anyone's relaxed. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm like, ah, we'll relax. It's iPhone. 
<laughs> you say that? You're like, no, I'm not relaxed. It's shattered. Yeah. Will relax. Get it's out of iPhone. My face. It's iPhone. Relax. <laughs> relax. Yeah. Uh, MetaQuest Two is going up in price, and you love this thing, MetaQuest Two. It seemed kind of like a good deal for a while, at <laughs> the price it was at. It's probably getting closer to. What I would expect uh, an item like the technology like that to cost, but it's always hard to make the adjustment to a higher cost when you've gotten something for a certain price previously. Mm -hmm. And but anyway, you can still buy it at its current price. The it will it will go up a hundred dollars starting in August, and apparently there's stock at Best Buy, B and H, Walmart, Target. I think Amazon may have sold out. Price right now was two ninety nine for the lower storage one twenty eight and three ninety nine for the two fifty six storage and that'll be obviously going up to three ninety nine and four ninety nine so now the top tier Quest two will be five hundred bucks getting closer to that console territory mm -hmm. and uh, I mean we can speculate as to why obviously a lot's been going on over there at Facebook a lot's been going on over there at Meta. Uh, as far as pivoting, transitioning into this new company, this new entity, this new focus. I know initially the idea was, okay, since we're going to, this is going to be the gateway into this metaverse, into this category of new products, we're going to give it to you as cheap as possible so more people adopt it. And it worked. There's a lot of people who bought the Quest or Quest 2. It, it worked good enough now that they can raise the price or shareholders and board members sat around and said why are we losing money on this headset mm -hmm. let's bump it up we're a little short on cash here also inflation like how come netflix can up their prices how come tesla can up their prices we have one product that people like why can't we turn up the volume on that price tag i don't know but anyway starting in august you're going to pay more for it so if you want one Probably better to get it sooner than later and save the hundred. It's quite a significant increase, by the way. I should say that's not like fifteen bucks. It's not like twenty bucks. You go from you're going up a hundred bucks, Will. Yeah, it's a big jump. It's a big jump. So uh yeah, so sticking with Zuckerberg for a second, he recently told staff that Meta is in this is the quote, deep philosophical competition with Apple to build the metaverse. Not a huge fan of Apple. Uh <laughs> I wouldn't think. I don't know. Uh, the the beef over privacy, Thanks. advertising, Instagram, so on and so forth. That may lead you into a philosophical competition mm. for who controls what. Obviously, Apple's system is fairly closed. And he's saying ours will be open. And that's the philosophical difference. Uh, he said Meta will try to build more open metaverse tech. The word metaverse, borrowed from science fiction, hypothetical version of the internet, access via immersive technologies like VR and AR. We're approaching this in an open way and trying to build a more open ecosystem. Meta is trying to make its metaverse tech compatible with Android phones as well. He also stated Apple will create a closed ecosystem for its metaverse tech and meta will try to be more open. So in other words, if people adopt Apple's version of the internet, privacy focused, closed uh, ecosystem, dependent upon a variety of hardware devices and software applications and accounts that are associated in one world and less interactive with external the external world, well, or you can imagine Facebook's version, at least the way they're propositioning it here, which is more like the current internet where there's many things plugged into it. Mm. Although I don't know why we would assume that they would be the right people to build that. Mm. Because I see all types of complaints happening right now on changes happening over at Instagram. They're like, what's up with Instagram? Instagram is just like another TikTok. Mm -hmm. That's what everyone's saying to me. Mm. It's like, why do I have two TikTok apps on my phone now? Because if you recall, and everyone's nostalgic, and they say, remember when I used to open Instagram and see a photo from a friend? <laughs> no, you ain't seeing that now. You see a TikTok. That thing been gone a long time. Your friends? What friends? Yeah. You have friends? TikToks. You have friends on the internet? What? Where are they? Yeah. 
are they unless they're influencers they're bye-bye because it doesn't seem like an inviting place for the regular people to interact at the moment mm. Uh, well, everybody got spooked by the TikTok stuff and started, you know, doing what they did. But uh, anyway, listen, we basically deliver our devices at cost or at slight subsidy. Getting back to this uh, MetaQuest 2, this is uh, Zuckerberg talking, or slightly more than cost in some cases. But the bottom line is our business is not primarily taking a premium on the devices. We want as many people to be interacting in there as possible. Part of that is having it an, o an open ecosystem that's interoperable. Now, they would be saying, okay, and here's how we pay for that. We don't make as much money on the devices, so there's advertising that takes place. Mm. Well, there's your philosophical difference. It's Google and Apple, Facebook and Apple, whoever you want to compare to Apple. Apple, they'll just make boatloads of money on the closed ecosystem, the hardware devices that let you access it, and then whatever accounts you have associated with it, whether it be for news or entertainment or books or whatever else so yeah it's a philosophical difference i don't know that one will specifically win out mm -hmm. or that you will have this variety just like we do in the tech space currently but he's in tight right now to create stuff quickly as the world seems to be crumbling around him yeah. in many pressure. in many ways now speaking of tiktok instagram becoming tiktok rogan recently had a conversation about tiktok with um who's on his show it was Theo Vaughn. And he actually, uh, Joe just went ahead and read some of the terms of service for TikTok. Oh, you're aware of this? You're nodding you're aware of this? Yeah, I read about it. I watched the video. The oh. clip on YouTube. Oh, easy there. Well, stop yeah. doing so much research. All right. I read TikTok's terms of service. I went down a TikTok rabbit hole yesterday. This is Rogan's words. This is so crazy. Theo then says, is this good or bad? And Rogan, with an exclamation point, said, bad. And so here's some of the tidbits that he pulled out of there. Listen to this. Here's what the privacy policy says. We collect certain information about the device you use, access the platform, such as IP address, user region, user agent, mobile carrier, time zone settings, identifiers for advertising purpose, model of your device, device system, network type, device IDs, screen resolution, operating system, app, and file names. Uh, and here, here's where I think people get a little more scared. All your apps, your file names, the things you have filed on your phone, file names, types, keystroke patterns, or rhythms. Mm -hmm. What, Will? What? You don't like that one either? <laughs> yeah, just able to record exactly what you type. You don't like the keystroke idea? Oh. Yeah. Um, battery state, audio settings, connected audio devices, where you log in from multiple devices, will be able to use your profile information to identify your activity across devices, we may also associate you with information collected from devices other than those you use to log into the platform. <laughs> Sounds like a great app. <laughs> well, listen, I don't know. I think under scrutiny, there's a lot of apps where the sure, terms of yeah. service or the privacy policy is you, you just be, wow, that's what it says in it. But certainly there's an extra level of scrutiny when it comes to TikTok and ByteDance and sure the foreign aspect of it and uh the chinese uh, ability to 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 dive into that to possibly re request information that has been collected and so forth and then questions about how that relationship operates i mean but that exists in many places to different extents mm -hmm. where governments are capable of reaching into tech companies databases and pulling what they see fit Obviously, there's plenty of history on that. Uh, in this case, it's, it's. I think maybe one of the concerning parts for people is that this is primarily an app that young people are really into. Mm. Young people seem to love TikTok and they seem to be somewhat oblivious to mm -hmm. how they're being data mined. Yes. And would just contribute information endlessly, possibly in exchange for entertainment. Uh, anyway, so he goes on to uh, be incredibly uh, skeptical and to essentially say that this, or to possibly insinuate that this is a key component in the existence of TikTok that in order to extract this information and so forth. I don't yeah. know that this is a surprise to anyone, 
but obviously it's news since Joe talk, talked on the subject now, but TikTok has been under extreme scrutiny for a while now. Mm -hmm. Nothing, nothing new there. No. This episode is sponsored by Stitch Fix. Discover styles you love. Mm. Discover them easier. Do it easier. Do it online. Never mind uh, heading to the store and I, I don't even know how to do that anymore. You, you know, you know how you get the weird uh, the room somewhere. I got to go try something on. Walking. Yeah, I don't know how to do that anymore. It's like a curtain, and you can't get the curtain closed properly it smells and somebody's like peeking in the corner over there trying to catch a look at you oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is the system for the future for fashion uh you talk about your style you do a quiz they figure out who you are on stitch fix what you like and don't like pieces are then picked for you stylists will send you pieces that reflect your style and fit your price point it's going to show up at your door like everything else that you buy and they're going to use different products from a number of brands to create this style brands that you're probably already familiar with you can see a list of them here columbia club monaco nike is on there levi's vans adidas for any style really there's thousands of brands stuff shows up at your house you only keep what you like everything else goes back it's free shipping easy returns and exchanges prepaid labels are included it's no commitments no subscription required you don't even need to put these pa these packages together that, that are going to look good together more and more people are getting back into the offices it's not just strictly remote work anymore you might be thinking about your style a lot has changed in the last few years let stitch fix help you out Sign up for Stitch Fix and get the season's latest pieces for women, men, and kids. There's no subscription required. Try once or set up automatic deliveries. There are no hidden fees ever. Sign up today at stitchfix.com slash later to get $20 off your first purchase. That's stitchfix.com slash later to get $20 off your first purchase. Limited time offer. Purchase within two days of sign up. We're also sponsored by Audible. They say connected, informed, and inspired. I, I like the informed portion because I do feel that way when I get my audiobooks going. When I have the opportunity in a car, that's primarily how I listen. Oh man, there's nothing like a, a long drive with an audiobook. Mm. You just, it's smooth. You just put it on there, you get a narrator that you like. Uh, anyway, I mean, this is a no brainer. This is a, a real smooth system. You look at these audiobooks, if you're gonna buy them one by one compared to just getting audible and getting the credits it's it's some of these things it's it's like uh you'd be surprised at the value actually if you're uh if you're into listening to audiobooks so uh, for me it's meant that i end up essentially reading more now i know some people they say i gotta read the actual book i gotta do this and that but this is a moment when you're in your car anyways mm -hmm. and i like podcasts as much as the next person but sometimes I want, I have a longer period of time to fill and I really want to fill it up with something that's like on task or something that is uh, connected over that period of time, like from chapter to chapter. Anyway, there's something for everybody on Audible. You already know that. If you haven't tried it yet, now's the time. Go try Audible. Audible offers incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre, from bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs mysteries and thrillers, motivation, wellness, business, and much, much more. I just finished the book, Can't Hurt Me, from David Goggins. Super well read, and in between each chapter, there's a conversation between Goggins and the writer. So you get a little bit of the behind the scenes and the reflection of that previous chapter. It's a super cool format. Let Audible help you discover new ways to laugh, be inspired, or be entertained. New members can try it free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash later or text later to 500-500. That's audible.com slash later or text later to 500-500 to try Audible free for 30 days. Audible.com slash later. Go check it out. Honda is teasing the design of their new EV launching in 2024. This is one of those companies, tried and tested companies, where you were sitting and wondering, hey, what you going to do about EVs? Because we saw it all these other places, like Hyundai, for example. It was just like, bam, 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 yeah. it's on the street. How are you doing this so fast? What are you doing? All these designs. What? How are you doing this? Uh -huh. 
And meanwhile, come you know, you've been staring at some other ones, Japanese companies, you've been looking at uh, Toyota, you've been looking at Honda, they say, you guys got a plan for this or what? Mm -hmm. This catch you by surprise? We're going to need five, six years? Uh, Toyota, we already talked about, they got plans, they've shown stuff off, they even showed off a Lexus model. And now Honda is going to join the party, 2024. It's called the Prologue EV. Of course, it's a kind of SUV type vehicle. And they will be pivoting to EVs vowing to deliver 100% electrified sales by 2040, which seems like a long time, but it is something. Um, this, uh, this electric SUV is going to be based on GM's Ultium electric platform, actually, and will be delivered alongside an all-electric Acura SUV as well. So they'll have the Honda version, the Acura version, whatever the luxury version of it. However, they com committed to an annual combined capacity of 70,000 units, so only 70,000 to be sold. And I watched a little bit of this video, how they designed it. They had a big VR component for collaboration. They're like, we could build it during COVID because we had the VR. We could walk around the car. We could uh, work with teams in Japan and in the U.S. They also talked about how they wanted to create like a futuristic electric look, but they also wanted to fit into the showroom amongst the existing Honda vehicles. And so it's, it's kind of, they don't give us the best view of it outside of the renders, mm. the sketches. Probably the best sketch is actually back on the page there where the guy's driving. It's a, Yeah, there. That's probably the best sketch you can get. I doubt it's going to look this long and stretched, though they did say in the video it's going to have uh, a long wheelbase. But I guess this is just another player coming into it, mm -hmm. coming to compete. We'll see what they have to bring in terms of uh, novelty and in terms of other things that Honda's been known for, like reliability and mm -hmm. things like this. Yes. I think there's, there's, there's customers out there. Uh, Cybertruck. So we had some news about Cybertruck recently that we're actually, they're going to deliver it. Maybe, yes. maybe, sort of, kind of, 2023. Anyway, some had wondered when you saw the original design of the Cybertruck, what does this mean for aerodynamics? Because that's a big uh, part of the conversation with EVs because you're always talking about range, mm -hmm. range anxiety. Well, obviously, if you have a lot of drag, you might be, it might be taking a hit on range. Mm -hmm. And so most EVs follow some rough idea of curves and for superior drag coefficient, uh, lack of drag. The Cybertruck was different. Here you had... A, tr a pickup truck that had all these all these angles, all these sharp angles and edges. Nobody had really done that. And so you started to get curious about how they're going to deliver on these range estimates. But it turns out maybe it's not as bad as you might have thought. Because mm -hmm. here we have some aerodynamic performance simulation. And uh, yeah, it's just a simulation. They don't have the actual vehicle at this moment. But uh, this is Alex Lazaro Pratt, a CFD engineer for Numeric Systems, used the company's aerodynamic simulation technology to produce a study that he then released on LinkedIn. And what he found with this particular vehicle is that he could get uh, the drag coefficient down to 0.39 CD, which, believe it or not, is quite a bit better than the average pickup truck, 0.55 and 0.65, somewhere in that range. Hmm. That's pretty good. Now, he did go on to say, hey, if we had a couple curves in here, it'd be even better. Okay. He did go on to say, hey, if the tail didn't drop off the way it does, we could do a little better. Mm. And Elon has spoken in the past about possibly shipping the vehicle with removable side mirrors. I don't know if you remember this, mm -hmm. because obviously we're going to pick up a little bit of drag right there. Yeah, this one doesn't have side mirrors, does it? In the simulation? Yeah, it doesn't look like a ton of drags being created there. It looks like, I mean, you can see here, a lot of drag is coming from those uh, fenders around the, the, those protrusions, the sharp edges around the wheel wells. Mm -hmm. You can see it's just dragging over there. Yeah. Yeah. So all the cool stuff sucks from this perspective. And I remember when I was looking at the Mercedes EQS and I was like, man, the shape of this thing, it's just like a bubble. It's just like a... The simplest form 
mm-hmm. almost like a raindrop, sort of. Mm-hmm. Like almost like a natural form, which could be beautiful in its own way, but you started to wonder if all cars were just going to be boring because they'd all be the same shape but because sure. we'd all be battling for maximum efficiency mm-hmm. and obviously these weren't the motivations of car designers once upon a time when they were making all kinds of crazy shapes which were fun to look at mm-hmm. but maybe not the most efficient but maybe the cyber truck proves that there can be somewhat of a balance but you can see how the tail screws screws everything up at the back there having the flat edge but i'm going to say one more thing on this topic when it comes to pickup trucks it's a different part of the market and they're already sort of boxy designs and they're already not the top performers when it comes to drag. So maybe it's special rules for the Cybertruck yeah. compared to other EVs that are competing against cars. Uh, do you want to win a $1 billion lottery jackpot? $1 billion. You sent this to me. I was like, wait a sec, a billion? Isn't that ridiculous? Like, I've never heard of this before. Inflation? $1 billion? Inflation? Yeah, Jeez, people need to see that's insane. people need to see bigger numbers even on the lottery to pay for the modern modern life in 2022. I don't know. Um, basically, the way this works is as people don't win the jackpot, as people can't pick the correct six numbers, it keeps increasing each time that there's no payout, and so this hasn't been won in weeks apparently. Is that right? Uh, let's see here. No ticket match. All the numbers on Tuesday's Mega Millions drawing. And the jackpot will now pass the $1 billion mark. Friday night's draw, a multi-stage game listed at $1.02 billion, making it tied for the second highest prize ever in Mega Millions history. Hmm. No one picked the six numbers. Uh, the jackpot has grown so large because there hasn't been a winner in three months. So people have been playing this thing. No winner. Three months. Keeps getting bigger and bigger. People are winning, just not the jackpot. They're winning like a million here, two million there, three million for matching some of the numbers, but not all of them. But anyway, uh, somebody's going to get this billion bucks at some point. It turns out this isn't even the biggest jackpot yet. There was $1.5 billion jackpot in South Carolina in October 2018. Wow. I just think, I can't, you imagine paying a tax on that one? Yeah. This is actually weird. It says that it comes with it. The 1.02 billion comes with a cash option of 602.5 million. What is what does the cash option mean? So you get it immediately or something? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I don't play these lotteries well. Okay. I don't play these lotteries. Well, I guess with tax, you're not an instant billionaire. No. In this case. Well, unless it keeps growing. Uh, yeah. If it gets up to like 2 billion. Sure. Then you are an instant billionaire. You go talk immediately to Elon. You're like, hey, man. Let's make some moves. Hey, man, I'm with you now. <laughs> yeah. He's like, no, you're not. Can we rent a boat and party? He's like, you just won like a mega millions draw. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I'm here now. I can make rockets too. Let's talk about drag coefficient. Yeah. I read this article this morning. Do you like ghost towns? Are you into that at all? Love them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so big fan. So this is pretty cool one. Um, I don't know why it popped up on my feed. It's a ghost town that somebody bought and has maintained mm. from the 80s. So it's it's with the idea that eventually you would attract tourists to stay in the ghost town. Right. That you could go here on vacation, essentially, to experience life in the 1980s. Okay. Well, life as it would have been in this town in the 1980s. It's in the wilderness of British Columbia, two-hour drive from any town, that's where this ghost town lives currently. It doesn't live very much. Uh, it was built for $50 million in 1981, only to be shut down one year later. Now, th- they had a community center, curling rink, grocery store, a pub. There was a mall, um, a pool. Medical equip- equipment is still there. The hospital is still there. Children's toys are still in the daycare. Mm. It's called Kit Salt. And there was a mining company that wanted to go in there, an American mining company. There's a material inside of there, molly, molly denim. And in order to 
appeal oh. to workers to come in to mine it, they had to have some sort of uh, community set up to say, hey, come move here. This is the way to live. Yeah, a lot of people buy like abandoned mining uh, areas. You know, there's housing there because people need to live while they're mining. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, now, I can totally see it. But nowadays what happens is they know it's going to be temporary and they only bring in temporary structures with the intent of taking them down after the mining sure. is complete. In the 80s, they not, you know, not knowing or not having access to that or just having a different approach, they would build an actual community in the same way you would build a community somewhere else, yes. just more rapidly. Uh -huh. And that's kind of what happened here. But what you end up with is a museum, essentially a time capsule where you can visit a small Canadian town from 1980. Very liminal. Of course. Look at the Sears, man. Look at the mall. Never stepped in. Some of these, some of these, apparently there was a newspaper. Okay, so there's a newspaper at the time, and the front page of the newspaper was talking about the opening of the mall. Huh. And then in tiny little print at the bottom of the newspaper, it said all mining operations to cease immediately. The mine is being shut down, something like this. So it's like, you can imagine the environment of the time of the kind of celebration of this cool new community and things opening up. What happened was the price of this particular material had crashed on the global market. I guess they found a bunch of it elsewhere. Mm. And so the mining company had to bail. They're like, this is no longer feasible at all. Mm. But it was happening in correlation alongside this, the event of the whole thing opening up. Yeah. It, it lasted like a year. So people, you can see it on the, on, the, on, the, on the macro scale of like the mining company or those that were building these buildings, but picture it on the individual family scale of the promise and then the sales pitch to the family. This is the big move. This is our big moment. We're going to go we're up gonna there. We're going to make it, honey. We're going to go up there. This is it. We're going we're gonna to live our lives. We're going to hit it big. It's going to be perfect. It's going to be a local pub and a bowling alley, and we're going to live out the dream. Only to a year later, escape immediately as it, everything sort of falls apart around you, except for the buildings themselves. You can see the sign is still up at the Royal Bank. The office will be closed as of 12 noon, Wednesday, October 12th. It closed to never reopen. That's the end of it. Oh, this looks like back rooms here <laughs> with the yellow. <laughs> oh, so freaky. So... Uh, I, I don't know why I get fascinated by this stuff, but yeah. anyway, they're they're relatively well-maintained. I mean, they're not perfectly maintained, obviously. Oh, this is the back rooms right now. <laughs> but that's what it's based on, right? That's what it's yeah. based on. Like, that's what all that idea is based on. It's like this feeling of abandonment or... The um, supposed optimism in the past. Yeah, and because you can, you can almost, just... like, smell the dreams of the yeah. time. You can almost feel... Uh, the promise of what could have been but wasn't. The That's... schools and the gymnasiums and so forth. Yeah. There's actually, if you click there on the last photo from 1983 right there, we had the last drink in the Maple Leaf Pub. That was the, mm -hmm. the bar, and everyone signed it. That was there before they left the town for good and to never come back, and that was October 1st, 1983. Mm. So... It almost feels um, hmm, like fiction, sort of. It, it almost feels too dramatic for regular lives. Yeah, very bittersweet. Right. I mean, this guy, whoever bought it, will revive it, right? Hopefully. Well, he doesn't know what to do with it, actually. Oh. It's, uh, there's speculation about the future obviously wants to preserve it to a certain extent, spends a lot of money to preserve it. Mm. Uh, and I presume at some point we'll try to monetize it by, here we go. The caretakers allow a few dozen guests each year through a former University of Northern BC program coordinator. For a fee, you can drive two hours down a barely passable road. The caretakers open the lock gates and let you into a time capsule that you can sleep in overnight. Are you willing to attempt it, Will? How do you pick? What, where yeah, are you? Bring a couple of friends. It's we all like, rent each house. Kind of like camping, sort of. Yeah. But 
different. If there's any hiking trails, hmm. could be an experience, like a glamping experience or something. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the past, in the 1980s. Yeah, the current owner has talked about it becoming a spiritual center, a wellness retreat, an LNG facility, and much more. Nothing has taken hold. The owner continues to funnel money in to preserve it in case something materializes. Some people were saying in the comments that they could have shot Stranger Things here. Oh, yeah. They could just find oh, yeah, totally. a town like that abandoned. I don't know if this is vast enough for a show like that, but I thought you might find that interesting, Will. Very cool. All right, you sent this one over. Researchers turning dead spiders into uh, claw machines. Yeah, very strange. And you might look at that and think, oh, did they find a way to revive dead spiders? They didn't, actually. The way this works is that these spiders... Uh, they kind of, they, they basically use hydraulics to extend their limbs. I didn't know that, actually. They have a cavity there in their bodies, a chamber contracting to send blood out, outward, and the hydraulic pressure allows a spider to extend their legs. And that is precisely why arachnids curl up when they die. Mm. They can no longer do it. So what these researchers figured out is, hey... We pump a little air in there, get a little syringe going into the right cavity. We can pop these legs out. We can grip as if we get a little claw grip going on, like those machines where you try to get the prizes out of. Yeah. That we talked about on the previous episode. Boom. Look at that. That's kind of cool. Decent grip. I mean, with these spiders, they're kind of just picking up little foam cubes. But, of course, the research exists for advancement in the area of soft robotics. Untapped types of acu acu actuation and materials. So the idea that all robotics, like there might be some bio versions, uh, which m might have properties that could be more um, capable than, than our idea of robotics, which is strictly nuts and bolts and yes. uh, metals and so forth. They mentioned the fact that... Um well, it's a spider, so it's organic and it can decompose, unlike a robot that has zero waste. Yeah. But what about parts. what about if you died and they turn you into a claw grab? I don't want that at all. <laughs> this is this just, is very strange. You, you just <laughs> <laughs> I'm a puppet. <laughs> they just lower you down. You pick your dead body picks things up. No, well, you wouldn't work that way anyway. Spiders would do a better job. Uh, how about this for the last story of the day? Uh, story of perseverance, a man who applied for a job at Google, 39 times he got rejected. 39 times he said, we're good. The guy's name, Tyler Cohen, 40th attempt. He goes for number 40. Nice. And they say, you're on, buddy. <laughs> you hit the threshold. You know that now that this story is out there, you know how many people are going to apply 40 times? <laughs> this is going to be like, well, that's all you have to do. You just have to hit 40. Yeah. Um... Tyler Cohen admits he towed the line between perseverance and insanity when he kept applying at Google despite facing multiple rejections. He scared, shared a screenshot of his communication history with the tech giant on LinkedIn, showing emails dating back to 2019. This is from him, his quote. There's a fine line between perseverance and insanity. I'm still trying to figure out which one I have. Used to work at DoorDash, actually. Wanted to move over to Google. Okay. And uh, shares the screenshot showcasing all of the thanks for applying at Google. You know those type of emails. Well, mm. hey, we really appreciate your interest. Yeah. Thanks for trying again. And then eventually following up on your recent application to Google. And you're like, woo, but it takes 40 times. Yeah. Anyway, people love this post on social media. 36,000 reactions and hundreds of comments. And then the post reached Google itself. What a journey it's been, Tyler. It was definitely time. That came directly from Google. <laughs> so they're congratulating him as well, saying it was, it was, a. Uh, it took 40 tries, but uh, everything has worked out in his favor. I don't know what the message is here. I think 40 is uh, maybe a little much. Uh, I don't know that there's a rule on this thing. Mm. I don't think Google wants 40 applications. I don't know. This was, this was another thing people were speculating is, 
Is there any degree of randomness, randomness to the way this process works when you run a company with 100,000 employees? Mm-hmm. Is there a thing where you can't actually reference every single submission? So what you're able to even analyze is a limited number that make yeah. it into hum- in front of humans, kind of like the way they run YouTube and sure. censoring and things like that. And then this time around, the guy just won the lottery, essentially, not a billion dollars, but a job at Google. Yeah, I'm curious what he did differently here. Mm. Or was it just like an automated thing for him Well, to just submit? They use algorithms for everything else. Sure. Do they use algorithms for uh, job applications? Yeah. Probably. Curious. Maybe. Curious thing. Anyway, thanks uh, very much to everybody who watched here today. Shout out to the community. Shout out. Shout out. I, uh, I know there's been a lot going on in our lives and your lives. And I want you to know that we're still here for you. We're, we're, we're always here for you. Yeah. Uh, that'll never change. Uh, so thank you to anybody who uh, left a comment down below. Talks to us on Twitter or chats in that Discord. We'll, uh, we'll be back and uh, we'll be better than ever. All right. Mm-hmm. Thanks.